laying down a naked street fighter. That can sound like something out of your grandmother's bucket list, but in the riding world, that sentence actually means crashed a bike with no fairings after having a body overhaul done to it. Hello everyone, it's your boy, Pones Jones, back at it with a terms and riding slang video. Stay tuned as over the next couple of minutes, we are going to go over 11 riding terms and slang words that you must know before you get on a bike. First off is a naked bike. Like I mentioned in the intro, this is a style of bike that does not hide its engine parts with fairings. By the way, fairings are these. Before the 1980s, pretty much all bikes were naked. No one had invented bike clothes yet. Fairings are called bike clothes now, I just made that up. But in more recent years, motorcycle makers began styling the engine bay of a naked bike to show all of its goodies. This became a piece of art in itself that you can clearly see when comparing the KTM 390 Duke to the RC. Oh, the nudity. Next we have laying it down. Laying down a bike is another phrase for crashing it. Not to be mistaken for dropping a bike, bike drops happen when a bike is not moving. Like when you are trying to put the kickstand down and your foot misses, sending you and the bike to the ground in a hurry. Been there. A couple of times. However, laying down a bike is when you literally lay the bike down. This usually happens in a crash, or if you badly negotiate a corner and end up low siding. Don't worry, we're gonna go over low siding in a bit. This almost always ends with you dead, or even worse, you have to replace your scratch to hell fairings, bike frame, or sliders. Yes, we will be covering sliders later. To round off the intro, our next term is street fighter. Street fighters are usually older naked bikes that once had fairings, but not always. A street fighter is a term given to an older sport bike like this one that has been modified to not look so dated. Sport bikes are motorcycles that have aggressively forward sitting positions and are meant for speed and tight cornering, or at least look like they should. But it's not always old bikes that get the treatment. If you lay down a modern sport bike in a big way and don't want to spend what could be an insane amount of money to replace your fairings, you can simply remove them. Then change your dash panel and lights around to fit your new style. Converting your bike to a street fighter can be a great way to breathe new life into a motorcycle. And also, they just look badass. Low side and high side, these terms describe which side of the bike you are being tossed off of if everything goes to shit. They are relative terms and do not mean the left or the right of the bike. They are just relative to the corner you are taking. You see, almost all bad things that can happen on a bike happen in a corner. So when trying to describe to your friends why the bike you just bought is at the bottom of a ravine, you can do so with slang. Low side is the inside of the corner or the side of the bike that is closest to the ground at the time of the wreck. Usually low siding a bike will end with your butt on the pavement and you letting the bike go so you can slide safely to the side of the road. But if everything goes wrong, your low side can turn into a high side. High siding it is when the bike falls towards the outside of the corner, which by the way almost defies physics, because bikes in a corner should not all of a sudden stand up, but they do. A bike can stand up for many reasons, like if you let go of the throttle, also called chopping the throttle, you slam on the brakes, you hit an extremely dense patch of ground like a pile of gravel or sand, and the list goes on. The scary part of a high side is that you almost always get tossed off the bike. Now, a body chucking crotch rocket does not care where you land, and most of the time it is either in oncoming traffic or over a cliff. Even if the corner you are taking is not on a cliff, one will appear while you are in mid-air, guaranteed. You do not want to experience a low or high side of any kind. Now onto sliders. Sliders stick out the side of your bike, clearing the fairings or engine bay, and are used to keep the embarrassing evidence of a recent laydown to a minimum. Manufacturers occasionally build sliders into their designs, but most of the time you will have to install them yourself. Sliders are especially great for beginners as they allow for small mistakes like dropping the bike without having to do massive expensive fixes. 
But beware, in some laydowns, a slider can grab the curb of the road and send your bike tumbling end over end to its death. If you made it this far, you probably liked the video, so be sure to give it a thumbs up. There are still six terms left in this video, so stay tuned. This and many other types of videos is what you will get when you subscribe to my channel, so give it a click. And be sure to slider all over my bell. In the comments, let me know what riding term I left out of this list. And now back to the video. We can't talk about crashing without experiencing a squid. This is a mocking term for riders who talk up a big game but handle their bike like it's a school bus. Also, squids typically don't wear any riding gear while riding. The term comes from the pile of jelly that one of these morons turns into after they rocket their hyperbike through the back of a semi-truck while trying to show off for the ladies. A real squid is a dead squid. Next up is road rash. Road rash is what you get when you are riding like a squid but get lucky. Road rash is what's left after the road strips away your skin from unprotected parts of your body as you slide down the roadway during a crash. Don't worry about wearing any gear. I'm sure the cheese grating of your entire top layer of skin feels real nice. Oh, by the way, jeans are not protective gear. The pavement is a hungry, hungry beast and will eat through your jeans in a heartbeat. Now for the reason why everyone loves riding a motorcycle the twisties. It's slang for roads with lots of corners and curves. Like lady curves, but better, getting down and deep in the apexes. Those are the pinnacle turning points of a corner. Better than ice cream on a hot day, preferred over a swack diddle, bumping uglies. Sought after by even the most elevated of humans, the twisties have the ability to transform you into a bearable human being in mere seconds. Now let's get back to basics here with counter steering. Now after you learn how to ride a bike, Nobody talks about counter steering again, ever. But it is important to know the concept. You spend all of your time riding on the edge of your tires in a corner. How do you get the bike over enough to get on the edge of your tire? Well, you have to counter steer it first. To put it simply, there is turning your handlebars, then there is leaning your bike into that same turn. So to start your bike leaning into a corner, you have to tip it to one side. And to do that, you have to turn your handlebars the opposite way of the corner for like half a second before turning them back the normal way to make it around that same corner. This action will come instinctually very quickly when you start learning to ride. So there is no real need to drive this one into your head. Just understand what is going on here. CCs. CI and displacement. We use these terms to determine the size of a motorcycle's engine. CC stands for cubic centimeters and is a unit of volume representing how much displacement is available in an engine. Displacement is the amount of volume that a piston can hold at max stroke. I won't get into engine basics here, but to put it simply, the more displacement, the bigger the engine, and the faster the bike. When referencing the name of a motorcycle, you actually don't even say cc's. A 600cc motorcycle is just called a 600. A 1000cc is just called a 1000 or a leader bike. Alternatively, US bike makers Harley-Davidson in India measure their motors in cubic inches, CI. But no one actually says CI, they just say cubic inches. You really only see cubic inches with cruisers, Cruisers are more of a classic style motorcycle where the rider is more in a sitting chair-like stance with emphasis placed on rider comfort. But for the most part, you will forever be comparing motorcycles via CCs. But as you may have heard, CCs are not everything when it comes to a motorcycle. Most 600cc and larger racing bikes can haul serious ass, like instant death kind of ass. This is usually safe for the track because in real life, you rarely get the chance to put that much power down to get the most out of your bike. Let me just say this. It is more fun to ride a small CC bike fast on your commute to work than it is to ride a large CC bike slowly. I have been on many small CC bikes and slamming on the throttle the gas, and throwing the lightweight machine around is quite satisfying. And finally, we get to the wave. 
the most sacred of gestures. Once you start riding, you'll notice that just about every other rider on a motorcycle will wave at you. Why? It's called the wave, and it's just a friendly way to say you are a member of an elite select group as motorcycle riders. So wave back. This phenomenon is mostly restricted to North America. The British use something much more subtle, like the nod of a head. In other parts of the world, riding motorcycles is as common or even more so than driving cars. So they don't tend to wave or they'd be doing it all the time. That's it for me. Give that subscribe button a triple click if I nailed this video and we will see you on the next one. Ciao.